Good morning, motor cars. It is the 31st, the very end of March, and a rainy day outside. Birthdays this weekend, we have Cornelius Stokes, who is in Toyota, Pamela Somerville, who is one of our accounting clerks, and Jordan LeBoy, who is a Honda Lube Tech. So happy birthday, guys. New anniversaries this weekend. Uh, the last time I was actually chatting with you folks, I gave you some random factoids about Russia, and I thought since the president's going to be meeting with a delegation from China shortly, and since, again, we don't hear a lot about what's going on in other countries or how things are in other countries, I thought I'd talk a little bit about China. The Chengdu Sishi School in China is the oldest school in the world. It was established in 143 BC, and classes are still taught there today. Contrary to popular opinion, the Great Wall of China can't be seen from space. All panda bears and zoos are on loan from China at a cost of US $1 million each per year for a minimum commitment of 10 years. If you don't have $10 million, China will barter. Canada, France, and Australia traded uranium for their panda bears. Ice cream was invented in China nearly 5,000 years ago. They also invented gunpowder, rockets, pasta, kites, and thousands of other things that we still use today. A medium-sized shirt in the U.S. is bigger than an extra-large shirt in China. You want to know a secret? It's because we're fat. The U.S. trade deficit with China is nearly 49,000 times greater than it was in 1985. Chances are good that no matter what you buy today, including food, all or part of it came from China or was processed in China. We also currently owe China a little over $1 trillion, more than we owe anyone else, and mostly to pay for our recent wars. One of the things I learned from my daughter when she actually took a trip to China a couple of years ago was that most of the toilets they have there are not the kind where you sit down. They're basically just a hole in the floor that you squat over, and apparently that's supposed to be better for you. But almost all of the toilets that they have in China are squat toilets. 29% of San Francisco's air pollution comes from China, mostly from coal power. I'm sorry, coal-fired power plants. Cans of fresh air in China sell for 80 cents each. No kidding. And the man who came up with the idea made more than $6 million in the past 10 months just selling canned air. So that lets you know how bad it is to breathe there. During World War II, Japan bombed China with fleas that were infected with bubonic plague. Japan did some other horrible things to China. Read about the rape of Nanking for one particularly brutal example. And to this day, most Chinese citizens hate Japan. Just 44% of Chinese citizens have a favorable view of the U.S. And as a result of that, a tourist visa to visit China, if you're from the U.S., costs $130, but only $30 if you're from anywhere else. China accounts for 25% of the world's paper supply, and it also uses more concrete in the past three years than the U.S. has used in the entire 20th century, 6.6 gigatons. China also carries out more death penalties than any other country in the world, but the U.S. is number five. China builds a new skyscraper every five days. It has also built 30 airports, the three longest bridges in the world, 6,000 miles of high-speed rail lines, 26,000 miles of highways, and 25 cities, all in the past five days. I'm sorry, not five days, five years. <laughs> That's a bit of an exaggeration. In China, there are no public utility companies, which means that the government gets to decide when you do or don't have heat, also how many babies you can have. The government also requires that you visit your parents at least once per year. Uh, let's see. In China, a Deng Zhu is someone that a rich person hires to serve the prison sentence for them. China has about 1 million more soldiers than we do and used to have about twice as many as we do. Their last major conflict was in 1953. Ours, well, it's still going on. This means that a larger percentage of their economy can pay for development, and they've taken advantage of that. China used to be known for copying things and making knockoffs of designer brands and that kind of thing. But now they've begun to create original products and technologies that no one else has ever thought of before. And with a workforce four times the size of ours, they can bring a new product to market in a fraction of the time. That's why you sometimes hear that China is now the last superpower. Uh, the final thing I want to talk about today is a foolproof plan on how to win the lottery. It is possible to guarantee a jackpot winning lottery ticket. 
Here's how. At the time that I actually got this information, the odds of winning the Powerball are roughly 1 in 292 million. That's right, almost the entire population of the U.S. Tickets cost $2 each. Therefore, to purchase every possible number combination, you have to spend at least $584,402,676. Assuming that you'll immediately lose roughly half of your winnings to taxes, it's necessary for the jackpot to be more than $1,685,000,000 before you even make a dime. So, for example, if the prize is $1,685,806,352, you'd take home as much as $500. The odds of winning the Mega Millions jackpot at the time that I wrote this are roughly 1 in 259 million and tickets cost $1. Therefore, to purchase every possible number combination, you have to spend at least $259 million. Since you'll use roughly half of your winnings again to taxes, it's necessary for the jackpot to be more than $520 million before you make any money. And once again, the actual prize amount less your investment in taxes determines your likely net. Suppose you're not looking to win the jackpot. Any win is good, right? Unfortunately, even if you spend $200 a week on the lottery, your odds of winning even $1 are still less than 1 in 10. Discouraged? It gets worse. The folks who run the lotteries rig the games in their favor by increasing the odds against you by tens of millions at least once each year. Every state that jumps aboard the lottery train jacks those odds too. So, unless you already have enough money that you don't have any reason to play, buying a lottery ticket has the same net result as setting your money on fire. If you invested $2 a week in a small yield mutual fund with a 1% annual return and reinvested the earnings for 18 years, you'd still make $7,632. Even if you just put it in a savings account with the crappy interest that those have, you'd still end up with $4,193 as opposed to nothing. I've said it before and I've said it again. The lottery is a tax on people who don't do math. Have a good weekend. Lot of